Hey Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 7, number 63, and here we were given information about um, the IRS and the average length of time it took an individual individual to complete their, their 1040, um, and maybe you've filled out a tax return before, it's a good time. I mean, it says the average time it takes is 10.53 hours, oops, let me get my pen going, with a standard deviation of two. And, and it says that the distribution is unknown. So you see me putting a question mark there because I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if it's uniform, skewed right, skewed left. They just, it's not known. So I put the question mark. And I can hear that my variable, it's the length of time for an individual to complete an IRS form. Now, that's a numerical variable, right? It is continuous. All right. So I, I keep that in mind as I, as I move forward with this. But I define my variable and then I define my average, or my X bar, I should say, because the last sentence said, suppose we randomly sample 36 taxpayers. So I hear that I have a sample, right? And as soon as you hear that, I hope you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna be looking at a sampling distribution. And because I had a numerical variable, right, that means I'm gonna be looking at an X bar. All right, if it was a categorical variable, we'd be looking at a P prime, but I've got X bar here. And so that should be the average length of time that it takes these 36 taxpayers to complete their IRS form. So that's the difference between an X and an X bar. Just We've got one person at a time versus the average from a sample. All right, so moving forward with that, part C says, hey, can you get the distribution for X bar? Well, we've learned from sampling distributions that the mean of your population, and keep in mind, this is your population distribution, And then we're gonna build our sampling distribution down here. And when you hear me say distribution, I just mean I'm making a graph, right? Or if I wanted to, if it was discrete, I could make a table. But whatever the mean of your population distribution, that's gonna be the mean of your sampling distribution. For the standard deviation from your population, if I wanna to build to a sampling distribution, I keep that number but I have to remember to divide by the square root of the sample size, and that number is the standard error. That's a vocab term. It really it means the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. It's just saying that is a lot, so we say standard error. All right, and I get that. When I crunch that number, it's 0.333. Now, the key thing here is why was I allowed to put the N, right? Why was I allowed to say the sampling distribution was approximately normal? Because, again, the population wasn't. It was unknown. We didn't know the shape. But the reason I can put the N here is because the sample size was over 30, and the central limit theorem kicked in. And what this allows me to do is now I can use normal CDF and inverse norm. And I can calculate probabilities. Oops, that's not how you say probability. Probabilities or, or percentiles. Same thing. Not same thing, but different calculator functions. Same idea. I, I get to use both of them. And here's my, my, this is my PDF. All right. You see that I've labeled my x-axis or technically my x-bar axis. I put 10.53 under the peak. And if I wanted to, I could, I could make these standard deviations. I could go up 0.333 and down 0.333, or about a third of an hour or 20 minutes if I wanted to scale out my x-bar axis. So this is, would you be surprised if 36 taxpayers finished their, um, their 1040s in an average of more than 12 hours? And just looking at the graph, right? If, this was, if I was going to add 0.33, and let me, let me erase all this because I have a lot on my graph. So let me undo this. If I'm thinking of 12 hours, right, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, here's the number under the peak, and I'm going to add about 0.33, that would be something like 10.86, right? So I think 12 is going to be way down here on the x-bar axis. So I think that would be rare, but let's go get the number for it. So if I want to calculate that probability, you see I've got my probability statement, right? I've got my letter, I've got my symbol, and I've got my number. Now take a look at your letter. I want to be real clear here that this letter, and let me highlight it, it is X bar. All right, it's not X because we were talking about the sample, right? It's talking about the 36 taxpayers. Well, because this is X bar here, I need to use the X bar numbers. And in fact, if they had just asked for the probability that X was greater than 12, I couldn't do it because I don't know what the distribution is. 
But because I'm on the sampling distribution, I can use normal CDF, low, high, mean, standard error, and there's that probability. It's basically zero. So yes, I would be surprised if we looked at our sample of 36 and it took them more than 12 hours to complete their, their tax reforms. It says, would you be surprised if one taxpayer finished his form in 12 hours? And this goes back to what I just said. Oops, just kidding. Here's all my work for it. All right, but let me, let me head back here. Um, so for part E, I can't do this calculation. So I, I had set it up top, but I can't do the probability that X is greater than 12 because I don't know the distribution. I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if it's uniform. I don't know anything. So I, I can't do that. And that's how we round out number 63. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.